that's how we, we would pitch our ideas. Yeah. We would usually attach a great producer to the idea ahead of time that studios would trust. We'd go in with the producer, we'd pitch them what we wanted yeah. to do, and they'd say, okay, cool, give us a draft. Pre us diving into the outline, doing what we what we've been doing in terms of talking a little mm. shop before, yeah, yeah. Um, because we're working on multiple pitches at the moment. Um, I was wondering if there was um, a businessy thing that we can talk about. Now we've we've touched on a lot of different aspects of pitches, and we've said many times that we should probably just do a whole. Yes. On pitches, yeah. but I, you know, what's interesting to me, um, and this has just come up recently. Actually, we have been discussing this with our team, with various producers that we're working with, and it really has to do with how to sell a pitch today. Is mm -hmm. it what you said before, which is, is it possible? I mean, you see them in the trades. There are pitches that mm -hmm. are selling you do. occasionally. Um, they're usually very high profile. I don't know of one recently that was on the kind that was, uh, felt like it was it's new. Funny, I, feel like I saw one just on, on deadline before the break. Oh, uh, wonderful. You should pull it up. We should let's see. Have a look. Now, was it, yeah. a, let's have a little look. It was by either the writer or director of Bob Barbarian. Well, that's not exactly a small fry, right? Well, that's what I mean. Yeah, but that's but that's maybe the example of going like it's possible if you had an incredibly successful. Sure, movie. I mean that's the um, thing is I feel like um, what we keep seeing are essentially the up and coming stars or yeah. real stars. It's a, you know, a what's it? It's a spec. It's a spec. New, new line 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 black line, line, blacklist. Yeah. New Line Cinema won a heated auction for weapons, a film it will fast track with the team behind the horror thriller Barbarian. Zach Krieger, Krieger, Krieger wrote the script mm. and will direct alongside Barbarian producing team Roy Lear, Vertigo, blah, blah, blah. Right. So, yeah, the spec. There you go. There you go. And I wonder, and, you know, I'd love to hear from any writers who may join us in brief. Yeah, yeah moments um what their recent experience has been yeah well, what we're essentially being told is that selling and i'm specifically talking about film right now uh, yes not television yes There's television a, is naturally pitch based it is because you're not just it's not a single script it's an entire series yeah. right. even if you write it let's let's just for a second, anyone who doesn't know this, even if you spec'd a TV pilot, most likely you're going to have to pitch the show, even with a script. So yeah. the pitch process in TV is is just an essential part of how you sell right. anything. Because um, while the pilot script speaks for itself and talks about concept and character and tone and start and story it's not going to be well what's the story of the season or what's the, going to be how the does three this... seasons yeah three seasons yes absolutely what's the ongoing story here what what what's the engine that's going to continue yeah. to drive this show you won't necessarily get that in mm -hmm. the pilot. and there's characters that probably aren't even in the pilot that are going to be really pilot. important absolutely. to yeah. the rest of the show yeah Anyway, so back to feature pitches where it isn't, you're not trying to pitch a series, you're trying to pitch one movie, maybe a franchise possibility, but really it's one movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how, do, how does one create enough of a package or enough of a, um, a, a commodity out of just a pitch um, that that you could make a dent in the market, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got, I mean, there's multiple things. One, you could find an IP that people want to potentially make a project out of already and 
try and get the executive who controls that IP or producer who controls that IP to listen to your take. And then it's already kind of on a slate. And we're doing that with something right now as well. Mm -hmm. um, or you can find another type of IP whereby, and this is what the other thing that we're doing, whereby you try and get a shopping agreement and use that IP as part of your pitch. Mm -hmm. um, and IP helps, but it's not... It's not the end. And by an IP, we mean a book, we mean a comic book, we mean a, something that already something that already exists. IP in uh, an intellectual property, something that already now. Of course, there are some public domain IPs. We've talked a little bit about we that. We use those all the time. You know, this was re this was really funny. <laughs> the other day, I was talking. I've uh, been writing this book that's inspired by a Christmas Carol. And uh, my nine-year-old son said, hang on a minute, Daddy. How are you able to write a Christmas carol? Doesn't the original author own the copyright? And I was like, oh, you <laughs> nine-year-old boy, like understanding these concepts, was like, that's amazing. How do you even know that's a thing? He's like, oh, well, I was learning about it in class. And like, that's oh, amazing. Wow. That's and great. And I that public domain and uh, death of author plus 70 years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I think that Number one, as we know, packages are really important. But what's interesting is at the moment, I think also, you know, the size of the movie, the type of movie and the audience that the movie is for, the type of place that you're trying to sell it to, I think would be really, really important in a pitch market right now. Mm. And I wonder if, like, how do you get talent to attach to a pitch how do yeah. you get a, a, a director to attach to a pitch we've been having these conversations and i think they're really interesting conundrums because this business has changed so much that the development aspect of movies has also changed and so the idea of just selling a property and it with a studio going, yeah, we like that. Let's see how the script comes out mm -hmm. is less likely to happen. And yet at the same time, the idea of getting a giant name director or name piece of talent to come on to something where you have no script and it's going to be, oh, will you come on and maybe in six to nine yeah. months we'll have something. Yet, new, you know, as we've discussed, you're not going to, you're, most people are not going to spec a script based on IP because they do not control that property unless you have yeah. walked that or you or it's a book that you've written. <laughs> and and I mean, honestly, and this conversation is specifically about not specking. Yeah. Is there a way still in 2023 to make a living as a screenwriter Yeah, and not spec? I mean, sure, there's like the... 10% that get offered jobs. Yes. And, and, that's and, and they may be able to sell us, may be able to sell a pitch. Sure. Not, not based on IP or based on IP. They might okay. be. Able or, or at least if you're the kind of writer who has really established yeah. a track record on a brand, you yeah, could yeah. get talent. Yeah. Like Derek Colson, who, who, who was our. It feels like every other week he's so busy. Every other week, I feel like I open up Deadline, and it's Derek Kolstad to adapt Streets of Rage. Right. Whatever. And he, they will bring him on to a piece of IP. They'll, there will be an actor or a director who will go, I want to do a movie like this. Maybe Derek would want to come and do it. Yeah. Um, we, you know. And so he's able to sell pitches because he has enough of a brand to where people go, well, I know what the script is going to – I know what I'm going to get. Totally. with the script from yeah. this guy. I'm going to get Derek Colston's um, script. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. But it used to be that you would go, I have this great idea. It's super unique. Yes. Let me tell you the story for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm done telling you the story, because I've got a great producer with me, you're yeah. going to trust the producer to help develop the screenplay with yeah. me. Yeah. And then... Maybe there's a director or someone attached to produce with the possibility of them directing if the script comes out. Mm -hmm. And that might help you sell the pitch too. 
or there's the, you know, the occasional piece of IP that's enough that you can go, hey, you know, I'm we sold a, I guess it's TV, but the pitch for Final Fantasy, but still it's like there's television, there's there's IPs out there that are big enough, but most of the huge IPs are snatched up, right? Like places just own those already. They paid for yeah. them. Yeah. Um, so the IPs that you're dealing with are might be beloved, but they're more niche. They're not the big giant. Oh, everybody knows that sure. has read that book. You right. know, type like yeah. you know, giant success. Not no Harry Potter's left out there. Sure, to go and like convince someone. There will be soon. There, there will be soon. Be soon. <laughs> um, you know, and I think one of the interesting things that we've been going through over the last two years is because that's how we did things yeah, for years. That's how we, we would did. pitch our ideas. Yeah. We would usually attach a great producer to the idea ahead of time that studios would trust. We'd go in with the producer. We'd pitch them what we wanted yeah. to do. And they'd say, okay, cool. Give us a draft. Yeah. Um, and then, you know the last two years and it started with a uh, one of our more high profile projects that started as a pitch we de we developed an entire pitch for this movie yeah um it was a great pitch it was a great pitch. pitch yeah and with that pitch we actually managed to attach a very high level actress which we're being told obviously now is is it, is a bit of a fluke. Yeah, but we did it. We managed to we do it. it. A very great producing team. Mm -hmm. Both elements that were on it, fantastic, mm -hmm. um, and a really high concept idea. So we managed yeah. to attach this per this person to to this pitch. Yeah, and then after one pass, everybody took a step back, yeah. including us, and said. Do we need to spec this, guys? I know. Even though it was an original idea, even though, yeah. like, like yeah. we, you know, it wasn't based on IP and or something that you know, it was like, and maybe that's why IP that well, the, public domain IP, right? Yeah. I mean, with with this incredible package, and we were like, well, wait, don't we? What shouldn't we just take all the shots, see if somebody buys it, mm -hmm. and then? You know, if they don't, then we'll spec it. I mean, that's the way I used to think about things. Yes. You know, you go, hey, take, the the shots. Yeah. take all the shots. If someone's willing to pay you to write it, fantastic. If you still believe in it after that, go write it. Yeah. And then you can take it out as a script a couple of years okay. later. For Probably some reason, it. that's not what people are thinking now. And yeah. there's this weird, I don't know whether it's fear or whether it's I mean ultimately I think that's I think that's the the biggest part of it. Hollywood is run by fear. Mm, mm. It is run by fear because it's a business and the decisions made by studios are based on I might really like that as an idea, but is this gonna be financially successful and all of the decisions it feels are based on those things which i understand because it is a it is a business do so, you think that in today's market taking a pitch out as a pitch with a producer and maybe no one else attached taking the swings do you think that that burns the project and that if you can't and even if you spec it you can't take it out so. again I don't think so. Then why do you think that that's not encouraged anymore? I don't know. I don't, again, I just, I think it, it comes down to time. How much time yeah. do you want to spend? You're going to spend a mm -hmm. month putting a solid pitch together. Yeah, but as we just, as you just said, when our agent asked us, well, how do you write? And we said, that's well, we break true. pretty much the entire story. He was like, well, can't you just put yeah. that into a pitch? And we said, yeah, yeah actually we yeah. could. And we did. And we did, but the through line of it is, is do I want to spend a month creating a pitch, including outline, working, working that, working that pitch, um, setting meetings, having that done, let's call it a two, two and a half month process. Or do I want to spend five to six months, including notes and feedback, getting a really solid draft with producers, 
in theory um and having yeah. that, and then at the end of that having a script i don't know i yeah i mean i would say the spec process our experience from yeah. our first from our initial concept through all the way to sale mm -hmm. has been over a year over a year each time yeah each yeah. time yeah. yeah so yeah you can have a bunch of those out there spinning at different stages mm -hmm. all at once and that's yeah. great but if you're talking about spending over a year versus a month mm -hmm. and then yeah, yeah you're just setting meetings right yeah i mean yeah. you can in theory have 12 pitches ready to go in a year in theory sure one script yeah. or two scripts ready to go yeah and i guess the the thing that i just i i just do, and i don't know the answer yeah, guys. i don't either um, but why are people not doing it? Yeah. Why are people not going, you know, it's a great idea and I should be paid to write this. Yeah. Because that's the way writers it come down to again, part of the part of when we've talked about it a little bit lately has been studios don't want to be in development. They don't want to have a script that they then get and then develop and then da 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 you know, there's this weird thing, right? And it's a cyclical thing. Yes, it is. It's and we've talked about this in very in, in various yeah. ways. Yeah. If writers started insisting on taking pitches out again because their best ideas deserve to be they 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 shouldn't be specking, they should be getting paid to write and yeah. forcing the hands of development. Yeah. Yes, there'd be some pain at first, but eventually you go, Well, all the best ideas are coming in as pitches. Yeah, there's a spec here yeah. and there, but shouldn't yeah. we be buying these? It's shouldn't we be developing them? It's all to it. The WGA can't put money out saying no more, no more spec scripts. No, no, no. no. I'm just no talking more. about the writing community. Yeah, sure. We have done this to ourselves. Sure. Yeah. Because when the studios say, "Well, you know, it'd be really great if you brought in an actor and a director," no writer said, "Fuck that. That's your job." Every oh, no. writer say, oh, oh okay, you'll, yeah. you'll, you'll yeah. buy this yeah. if I get an actor and a director. Okay, I'll go spend six months trying well, to do because, that. Yeah, absolutely. Again, I, I think back to Winter's Night. We were unknown writers. The producer went, how can we make this? The producer was like, you know, Lawrence Gray said, perhaps he, he needed to partner with somebody bigger. Partnered with Mark Platt. Uh, then when uh, we should really get some good direct, some, some interesting filmmakers. So in that situation where we're with newbie writers right. and then that sells big and then all the other people in Hollywood go, oh, that's a good example. We should do that too. I'm not saying that, that happened with us, but like one yeah. thing happens where something's all packaged up together and it goes. And then well, there's always been packages, say, of course. right? Absolutely. There's always been packages and I don't think that will ever go away. Right. But I think that there was a day where development was a thing. Development Here's money, thing. development executives. Is I think thing. it is still a thing. I just don't think it's as much of a thing. Mm. I think perhaps when a studio buys a piece of IP, they don't mind developing. Like, yeah, no, totally. Narnia. Netflix bought Narnia five years ago. Clearly, they've been developing all They've that. been developing it ever yeah. since. Yeah. You've got some questions. Sure. That, that, yeah. That before we head couple, into our next segment, let's answer some questions. A couple uh, from Nick. Thanks, Nick, for, for chiming in. Yeah. Two pitching questions. One, how much emphasis do you put on the marketability of a story you're pitching, i.e. target demographic, how you'll bring in non-primary audiences? A Ed, sentence or two, right. maybe. A sentence or two. Here's the thing. Studios get it. They know well, that's the thing. If your if your pitch isn't clear enough and clean enough for them to understand who the audience is, then you're doing something wrong to begin yeah, with. Totally. You and know. they might ask that in the Q and A. Oh yeah. So what's the rating of this movie? We've absolutely yeah. been asked that. We PG thirteen. Absolutely. It's our whatever. Totally. Yeah. So um, question number two. I th so I think I think I think it's brief. You know. Yeah. Uh, then brief. yeah. Second question. Ever been blindsided by a question during pitch? during a pitch, any questions that always come up? Yes, absolutely been blindsided. Um, we had a pitch once where the uh, producer asked us a question that completely destroyed our pitch in one question. And we were like, yeah, you're I'm right. Answer that question, you're right. 
I can't even remember exactly what the comment was. It was it was yeah, for okay. a, an open assignment, actually. And we had come in with this take. Yeah. And literally, I mean, this was a very smart producer. Totally. We thought we had it all mapped out. And yeah. it was like, so well, what about this, guys? And we just sat there and went, fuck, in our heads. Yeah. We and, we, you know, for a moment, there, there's a moment where you try and bullshit. There's a moment where you go, well, you know, and then you just finally go, we'll have to think about that. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, and that was exact. And here's the thing: they weren't like, "And never, can never darken my doorstep again." They were like, no. "Great, we'd love to hear the solution yeah. to the problem." You guys have done some great work. We just never did. <laughs> we didn't. No, we never went back. We were so embarrassed. We were. We were pretty. We were bad. really embarrassed by that. We we couldn't believe we hadn't thought yeah. about that plot aspect. Yeah. The totally. other blind side that I can that I, that I think of is we had a a pitch where and we had pitched to a bunch of people and this question had never come up before so we didn't even realize that we hadn't done the work because sometimes when you're putting together a pitch it's a pitch it's, it's a pitch. You're not intended to know every little detail it's a pitch but here's the thing sometimes people ask about details and if you don't know them yeah. you're blindsided so there was a a movie that we were pitching whereby there was a daughter and oh, yeah. there, was a, there was a son and a daughter and they go on this adventure with their dad. And the executive said, so why is the daughter in this movie? And it just, and it just made us go. We were just like, yeah. But so that, I mean, that's, it was a weird pitch. It was a weird question because you're like, well, but that's the story we're telling, right? Like, yeah. it's but a it was, story but it about was, a dad. Ultimately, it was astute. But it was a good question. Because if the daughter had been taken out of the story, would anything be different? And the yeah. answer was not really no. Yeah, yeah. It, it really, it actually, it totally um, like whiplash made us go. It's, it's an yeah. argument for while you have your pitch, your pitch is the tip of the iceberg to all of the stuff that you already know yeah. and have already got worked out. And it's really tempting. I, I touched on this on, on, on another episode. It's really tempting to want to show all of your homework and go, look, I've got everything worked out. But no, right. you're doing a 20 to 25 minute pitch. You don't, you're not going to have time to show. All of no, it. there's just not enough time. It's just not enough time. But you still need to have yeah. it all worked out. Or at least have an, I mean, look, there are certain things that you can have examples for. If you don't have every set piece worked out, but you know a great example of something that you're going to do, at least it gives them a sense of it. Yes. But if you're talking about why is a character in the movie, it's like, well, yeah. we obviously had not thought through the very <laughs> question, which is, why is this character in this movie? Other yeah. than we liked it. Totally. We yeah, really That's what we, we, in our minds, we yeah. envision there being a daughter. But touching base on something that you that you said a minute ago, there's, you know, like, bullshitting. Bullshit. You can, you absolutely can bullshit. And in fact, we know of a great, we know of a great story, and I won't name names or projects, but there was, a few years ago, a very well-known and successful, pretty successful TV series that came out. And we know the writers and showrunners of it. And they went in to go and pitch. Well, it's based on a very well-known IP. They went in to go and pitch a sequel to this well-known IP. And the producer, head of the company, came in and sat down and said, so I hear you want to pitch me this prequel. And they went, yes, we're here to pitch you this prequel. And came up with this entire thing in a bullshit answer and got the job and uh, they won Emmys for it. Right. And it's amazing. And I, I don't know that we would have been able to do that. Yes. that's. I don't know that we would have been able to do that. I would just go, we would have gone, Oh no, no, it's been a miscommunication. We're here to do a sequel. They were like, drop that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've had situations where people yeah. have said, so you're here to, I mean, and usually we tend to be, I mean, look, we'll bullshit one or two points and we've done that, but we've actually been called out on it too. We have. On, in, in our very first creative yeah. meeting That's ever right. with a studio, um, we were blindsided by a question we didn't realize we needed the answer to. And yeah. then we 
like started bullshitting and the executive who is just wonderful and she's a uh, someone we we've worked with many times basically was like don't fucking bullshit me. You know, <laughs> look, if you haven't thought about it yet, just tell me I haven't thought about it yet. Yeah, and totally. then fucking come back and, and I, tell me your answer. I so appreciated the honesty. Yeah. Because I do feel that honesty is very rare in Hollywood because it's all about making friends and being friends and all that. But because we were new, this executive I felt was like, I'm just gonna play, I'm just gonna talk to you real. And she did that several times over our career. Just like, you need to know this because you don't know this. Right. And that was one of those times. It was like, it was, it's okay if you just say you don't know. And you know, I was also thinking that like there there was a time this summer where we went out for an assignment and we, we thought we were having a meeting whereby it was literally just a, hey, here's what we want yeah. to do with it. Yeah. And getting this a sense for what yeah. the producers wanted. We get on the Zoom and they're like, cool. So you guys ready? We're, we're, we're all ears. <laughs> and that's a moment where we could have bullshitted through a pitch, but it would have sucked. It we, sucked. Yeah, we we yeah. just we weren't prepared at all. We re yeah. genuinely were there to to yeah. hear what yeah. they wanted to do. We'd read the script. Yeah, but we were like, well, what? what do yeah, you are you are you wanting script? to do? Because sometimes they won't be like you won't get clear directions. Sometimes it's we want a page one rewrite. We don't like this script at all, but we like the concept. All the times yeah. it's there are some things that are working here, but and that's what we need to find I out. I love when they send you a script, and the answer is we don't want to use anything of this script, but they don't tell you that until after you've read it. And you're like, I know. Why did you waste all the time? Films? It's almost like Hollywood executives are deeply insecure people, just like us. Just the like other question is any know. questions that always come up? Yes. So, can you explain a little bit more the arc of the character? Arc of the character. All no the matter time. what. Even if you have said specifically in your pitch yep. what the arc of the character is, they want to hear it. They'll ask you. About and it. here's the thing: there are sometimes, and this will go to, you know, um, uh, another point. There are sometimes times in the Q and A where Q and A's are, it's it's rarely just one person at a studio. Rarely, you might have, yeah. you know, rarely. An exec and an assistant, or a junior. Yeah. Or a junior, um, yeah, yeah. People need to look smart in meetings. Right. Is what I'll say. They, yeah, they of course they do. If they have no questions, people worry it makes them look stupid. Mm -hmm. In front of colleagues, in front of you. Their boss. Their boss. Absolutely. So right. that's one of the stock ones that people tend to say. Rarely, rarely have I ever gone, did you not hear, you know, did you not hear it? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's you never, kind of answer it again. You kind of just answer it again and go, okay, yeah. So I'll just, I'll just clarify it. And that's something yeah. you better know anyway. Absolutely. So if you don't know Absolutely. the arc of your, now what's funny is sometimes they'll ask you about the arc of a small supporting character. They will. They and absolutely that will. has been like, that yeah. you've had the bullshit because we're you like, the bullshit. Why do you fucking care? Like <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, and we've totally had that. So again, yeah. it's about how much you have how much you have worked out. Um what was it one time somebody asked us about the romance between two supporting characters in a pitch? And like the whole totally. like these were literally like small characters in the in it was it was for show, but they were like, yeah. tell me more about like the juicy romance between those two. And like, like the whole thing was just in one scene, and they die at the end. <laughs> it was, it was, literally, well, it was like, very simple. They okay. go from uh, being alive at the beginning to at the end uh, being dead. Look, we answered it. The reality is, if you have enough, if you've spent enough time, and you know your source material, and you know the the story that you want to tell, while it's bullshitting, it's also coming from a place of knowledge and creativity. Sure. You. You're bullshitting because you haven't prepared that specific answer, but you do know the characters and know yes, the story. You do. It's you do. only every once in a while when they go, so why is the daughter in this? Yeah. That you go, ah, oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> you go out and step into traffic. <laughs> Let me go for, take that screenwriter title off my, uh, <laughs> off my, off my resume. <laughs> Um, Daniel, Daniel writes, he said, hey guys, love the channel. Thanks, Daniel. I'm a recently repped writer. Congratulations with only yeah. one in my belt. I had my first general yesterday with an SVP from Thunder Road and it lasted 20 minutes. Is that a bad sign? Yeah. 
No, it's not a bad side at all. Not necessarily. Not at all. Not at all. No, you don't, I, I mean, who knows? We've had quick meetings before. Yeah, and without knowing what you talked about, um, then yeah. that's that's difficult. If yeah. if the meeting ended on an awkward silence where <laughs> where you're both going, um, yeah. if so... the meeting ended like if the meeting ended like, so what are the things you're writing on working on at the moment? Honestly, nothing. <laughs> well, great, really nice to meet you. Then then that's then that's maybe not a great. Story. Yeah, I mean, look, here's here's the the reality is the. The longer you're on with someone because you're you're driving and everything's great, yeah, that's awesome. It doesn't that doesn't mean that you're going to get the job or or have an opportunity either. Sometimes someone hears what they want to hear from you so fast that they're like, I don't want to. Yeah. Th there is like, I don't want to muddy this. Yeah. I like the idea you just told me. Yeah. Go away. Give me more. Totally. And that may only be twenty minutes. I'll add. I'll add though, Daniel, and we talked about this in a in a in a previous episode. Make sure you exchange information with that person, or if you don't, ask your new rep um, mm -hmm. to give you that person's email and send them a follow-up email in a couple of days. Yeah. Hey, really great to meet you the other day. Really enjoyed talking about X, Y, Z. Hope we can find something together. And then at the end of every year, make sure you get a, them a Christmas card or send them a holiday email, something just to keep that, keep this person in your mind right. it's really important these these meetings while they obviously can generate work the purpose of them is to generate a relationship which will be yeah. fruitful in the future that may well, they're not be generals, in the future right? they're called generals absolutely right so yeah. i would really encourage that anytime anyone has a general that is the start of a relationship mm -hmm. and it's important to maintain that relationship and that's going to be on you to do that so that would just be my advice. Even if a meeting is short, it doesn't matter. It's yeah. how can you maintain that relationship moving forward? And here's also, what you have to remember too, is that these people have a million things on their plate. You have no idea what else is going on. Yeah. They may have had a hard out where they yeah. needed to get off the Zoom and nobody told you about they it. They might have, absolutely. And they, and they might not say that going into it either. Right. You no. Know, um, yeah. So don't read too much into it, Daniel. Don't read too much into it. It's That's great right. that you are getting meetings. Thunder Road's Good a great stuff, company. Yeah, yeah. So, Good um, luck. I don't think we've met at Thunder. We should meet at Thunder Road. Yeah, it's about it's Basel. Basel company, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So anyway, um, call my agent. <laughs> call my agent. Call my manager. I have, I, I have a pretty good reason why our manager has not. Um, but anyways, the the. <laughs> Been moving right along. We've been really um, moving along on this stuff. So, ma ma should, we, should we not outline today? Should we just talk some more business stuff and just make it business episode? I guess it is just we're already at forty-two minutes. To jump in for eighteen minutes might not be um, yeah, might not be worth it. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Any other questions, guys? Anyone wa watching? I know we've got like you know four or five people uh, jumping in and out. Please feel free to to write your questions in the comments. That's yeah, awesome. Bringing um, this back to bringing this back to pitches. Mm -hmm. Um. I know we were saying, um, is there is there a, a version at the moment where 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 pitches sell? And we were talking with our manager last night about it's all about playing the odds and what increase your chances of things and what what decrease your chances of things. Yeah. I think a naked pitch never do a pitch naked. Um, <laughs> I think a naked pitch, i.e., with Minimal, minimal attachments. Let's just say it's a producer. yeah. No meaningful attachments. Yes. Maybe right. you have a producer, but they're not like an eight hundred pound gorilla producer. Yeah. Um. Um. Uh, again, it depends. It depends on many things. Is this a big budget movie? Is it a mid budget? Yeah. Is it a mid budget? Is it a low budget movie? Is it something that they're really looking for? And there's always the chance. And here's the thing: like even. Even when people say no, they'll never sell. That they they do. They do. They do. Yeah. And and we were talking about this this morning because I get very frustrated um, about any look. This business, if you want to be a screenwriter, you have to know going into it the odds are against you. Period. Yeah. yeah. Like, what do they when you join the WGA? They say you've got a better chance of being a professional baseball player than joining this union. And that's the truth. Yeah, it is fucking hard. And then once you join the union, 
getting your next job is just as hard and getting your job after that is just as hard. And the number of working screenwriters who actually make a living every year writing movies, it like gets smaller and smaller every year. La, 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 I'm not listening. Yeah. La, la, la. So, I'm not, the point is not the doom and gloom. The point actually is it is a risk. The odds are against you. And that when you go out to try and be a screenwriter, your whole thing is to break, break you know, to, to, mm. to beat the odds. Yeah. Your goal is to beat the odds. Totally. And to do that, you've got to be more ambitious, more of a hustler, more creative, more relentless, more all yeah. you got to yeah. yeah. stack it as much as you can. But then even if you are all of those things, the odds are still against you. Yes. And so regard with regards to pitching at the moment, it's are there naked specs that so naked uh, that pitches that sell? I'm sure there are. I doubt they're going to be on a hundred million dollar movies. Mm -hmm. um, again, yeah. it's 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 working out what's in favor of the project versus what's against it, and right. what's in favor of the project are things that are going to be known commodities. Yeah. You might be a known commodity. The producer is a known commodity. Um, the idea that you're basing it on the type of movie can be a no can be a known commodity. Um, but again, if you, if there are things that are, well, it's great now because not only do you have all of those things, but you've got, uh, this young woman who was just the lead of a Marvel movie. Cool. Great. Well, that's, I mean, that and a filmmaker are the things that are going to really push something up over the edge whereby yeah. it might buy a pitch. However, the counter to that is. Those people tend not to tend not to attach to pitches unless it's coming from the five or ten writers. Yeah, <laughs> you know the 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 A list screenwriters. We're not A list screenwriters yet by any means. Yeah, um, it would be great. We will we, we'll be one day. But you know what? We know some A list screenwriters, and attaching talent is not always easy, even to their pitches. Totally. Absolutely. And and yeah. the reality is too like. When you attach talent to a pitch, the studio knows going into it that they're not really attached. They're <laughs> saying they would like to do it. Well, I'm, I'm potentially interested in this. But yeah. they're not committing until yeah. they read a script. Totally. And the studio knows that. Yeah, totally. So Absolutely. there is an argument to be had to mm -hmm. say, go out with the best team that you can. Yeah. And swing for the fences and hope that you just happen to hit a home run. Um, I think that, you know, it's a very difficult position that we're in right now mm -hmm. in, in Hollywood to go, how many places are willing to hear a great idea and spend the hundreds of thousands of dollars that it, they're going to need to spend mm -hmm. to maybe get a good script and then develop it. Mm -hmm. That's the way it was always done. And I'll, I'll be... I think it will. I think it will get there again. I think it will get there after things kind of balance out in terms of this. Um, in terms of this streaming war stuff, I right. think there'll be. I think there's going to be a casualty or two in the streaming wars. I think they're just. Yeah, I mean, but do you think? Okay, so here's one of the reasons people are saying that this has gone the way that it's gone, and it has to do with the corporate. Um, buying up of all the entertainment companies mm -hmm. and the fact that no longer do entertainment companies um, act autonomously. They all have boards of, and shareholders that they have to answer to and they have balance sheets that they have to be aware of. And mm -hmm. when you put development on a balance sheet that then is not bringing in any additional dollars. I don't know. I mean, it's tough, isn't it? Because any tech firm... Spends millions each year on R and D that products. But they're tech companies. Right, but so is Netflix. It's a different. So yeah, Amazon. but but they're not. Places yeah. are, they are used. To, they are used to that kind of innovation. Um, so. So why do you think that Netflix hasn't approached creating content in the way that they approach putting money into R and D? Well, here's the thing: they 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 have in the past, like we're saying. 
I know of two giant IPs that Netflix has that sure huge but that's not, not pure not R&D D. that's I'm buying a huge IP and then we'll develop yeah something that feels like a I mean they've spent they've undoubted I mean I, I we know for a fact that on one of those IPs that we can't talk about because we signed an NDA that they have written two or three versions of the show right. for this and have been coming and doing another version of it again. This was something we were looking at doing five or six years ago. I didn't know that. So um, they, 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 they do if the product's right. But that's, that's the thing. Down. There's no risks on originals. Yeah. And that, I think, is a, a real... That's where the shame, I think, comes in. And, that, and that's where the risk aversion comes in. It's easy... So, if you're Netflix and you're going to your shareholders and going, we just bought the Chronicles of Narnia. It's going to take us five years to get there, but don't worry. It's the fucking Chronicles of Narnia. Yeah. Well, shareholders are going to look at that as a good investment, right? Oh. Um, if you're going, I just spent the same $500 million on 50 original screenplays that I couldn't even tell you right now, but don't worry. Uh, they're all like, we don't actually have any scripts yet, but we're going to get there and we're pretty sure they're going to be good. It's a different story. Now, I don't think that, like you said, I, I'm hopeful that the development will that will come around again. I think it's it's generally speaking less expensive for a company to buy a pitch than it is a spec. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking original ideas, there is a bit less of a gamble. Yes. To buy a pitch of an original than there is a spec. Now it yeah, goes both ways. Yeah. It's less of a financial gamble and more of a creative gamble right. because you don't know how the script is going to come out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I might buy an original. I, there might be an original spec out there that is a totally original idea mm. that's going to cost $80 million to make. And there might be a lot of anxiety about, do we spend $80 million on this original thing that has no underlying IP behind it? Mm. Or, and, and the script is going to cost them a million bucks or something like that. Right, right. right. Um, or someone comes in with the same original idea. It's a big idea, but through development, there's no specific budget. Right. Attached. The script isn't written yet. And instead of a million bucks, I can pay the writers 200 grand mm -hmm. and I can get a script and I can guide that script. And I still love the same idea, but this way I haven't put as much into it. And I don't know, like I can still hopefully get a movie that is within what I'm looking for. I think it, it's a lot about yeah. trust. Do you trust your development executives to be able right. to do that? Yeah. You know, yeah. Do you trust your the writers that are coming in to be able to deliver? Do you trust the producers that are with the writers to be able to get mm -hmm. the writers to deliver? Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's one of the things that is also always difficult about selling a pitch. As we're talking in the business in business terms, when you sell a pitch, you better be able to deliver on that pitch. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. the last, if you're going out with a script. The proof is in the pudding. Yes. You've written it. It's either good or it's bad. Yep. Right? Yeah. If you're going out with a pitch, you may be able to pitch the shit out of that story. <laughs> if you can't deliver on that idea yeah. and actually yeah. turn in a good script, sure. you may never work for that company again. Yeah, I hear you. Absolutely. Because yeah. that is the gamble, right? Yeah. You're going, I'm going to trust you. You go. You gave me a great they idea. Did. Like they might have read your previous work, and you might have proven yourself in several ways. You go, oh, okay, you know, you had a movie come out to deliver. Yeah, cool. yeah, but you still have to deliver. Yeah, you still have to. Deliver. You have to. You have to give them what you promised. It doesn't yeah. have to be a shooting. Well, we had that experience, didn't we? We had an experience where we sold a pitch to uh, to Hallmark. Ultimately, it was where it went to. And um, Hallmark was it Hallmark? Freeform. Free form. I apologize. Yeah, free form. We sold a Come picture. on. Sorry. Yes. Free form. No. I, my my mother in law loves Hallmark movies. Absolutely. So, um, we, didn't, but we didn't sell it there. That's all. That that, that would be a lie. That is the point. We sold it to free form, and uh, we wrote. We 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 got a whole bunch of notes. We've talked about this before. Yeah. We had. Yeah. Uh, but and we got to a point with the script. We were like, 
this isn't good. We can't turn this in. We can't turn this in. This is not good. Mm-hmm. And um, and we said we're going to be we're going to be late on delivery because we need, we need more time need because more time. it's more important to deliver something that feels like it is what they were expecting yeah. Yeah. than it is to be on time at Agreed. the end of the day. Agreed. And you know, I I remember one of our earlier jobs was for a Chinese company. Mm. They actually hired us to do a movie adaptation of a comic book. And the pitch was limiting because of the, I'll say the limitations of the project itself. Yes. And so we could only pitch within the guidelines of what we were told we could pitch on. And some of that had to do with legal things and other things had to do with creative that that they weren't considering going down. But we did it. It was a a good paycheck. So we were like, fuck, we, we want to do this. We let's okay. get paid. Yeah. Um, it felt like it was going to be an easy gig. We thought yeah. we had a good grasp on the material. It was a comic mm-hmm. book. We knew really, really well. Yeah, sure. Um, and so we went ahead, we took the job, we pitched them our take. It was actually a much easier pitch because it was a very um, people that we had worked with before and they, mm-hmm. we didn't even have to go into as many details as we normally. Yeah, would. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I will say it's the one script of our whole career that I don't feel like we delivered on. Yeah. I know. And I, it's a shame. And I, and I, I hear it. I don't, I don't blame us because of the limitations that were on us I know. and yet at the same time that became so that writing that script was so hard it was really hard that at the by the time we were done and had a draft we were just like oh fuck just get rid of it <laughs> like just take it please <laughs> god so take it away from us and Can hire somebody else. Over now like please yeah uh, and yeah. you know like we we have not worked for that company again um yeah. And yeah. I, yeah. you know, I, well, I don't blame them mm-hmm. if they don't hire us again. I feel bad that it that it happened that way, um, but I feel like when you pitch, yeah, just going back to it, yeah, just be sure you're able to deliver. We've yeah. you know we talked about this before yeah. in terms of pitching out ideas, even at the smaller level. And mm-hmm. I want to clarify too: there are pitches. And we've talked about this at various different stages. Mm -hmm. Not all pitches are to buyers. Some pitches are to producers. And those producers then may end up developing a spec with you. Totally. Absolutely. The same rule applies. Mm -hmm. If you're going to pitch an idea to a producer, you better be able to deliver that script. Yeah, sure. Because you want nobody wants to go through development hell when nobody's getting paid. Of course. <laughs> you really don't. You know. I mean, we've been in that. And and we've I done. think that, you know. <laughs> we've been in development hell on pitches oh, several yeah. times in the past. Well, and, and sometimes it's, look, we had a TV show we sold once where we pitched it. They loved the pitch. They bought it kind of preemptively. Uh, yeah. before we went everywhere else. Yeah. We wrote a draft based exactly on the pitch. We delivered exactly what we promised we would deliver. And their response was, based on the market, can you change? (laughs) Important thing. Like, can you change the time and setting to make it modern day when it took place hundreds of years ago in Europe? And so we were like, hmm, okay, well. I guess. (laughs) You can try. And they were paying us. They were. And it's their prerogative what to do with and their money. Did. And we didn't shit the bed on it. It wasn't as but good. But I wish, I wish we had said, honestly, we don't want to do something that we're not going to, that isn't yeah. going to really be what what we could deliver on. The movie, the, the show in this case, this is really the concept. And you're gonna have you're gonna be disappointed with what you get, yeah. and then if you are like you're gonna feel like we didn't come through on our end of the bargain. Yeah. Um. And so, and that one was a real shame too, because it's just like you know, there goes um, that idea. Um, and they own that now. They do. Although, yeah, one day maybe we'll buy it one back. One day maybe we'll get that back. 